Chainsaw Man, episode two. Our first episode as full-on Chainsaw Man. And joining this new group. And shirtless. I think he's okay with that. I think that's what he's looking for. Oh. Oh. This is not the kind of care I was expecting. But then he's okay with that. <laughs> he's alright. It's a tension. Can I also sit on your lap? Like a dog. But I still like her. <laughs> oh, maybe I underestimated Denji a little bit. He's less lonely than I am. <laughs> But she still lives on in my chainsaw hands. That's the key to a man's heart. Free food and hotness. <laughs> oh yeah, and kindness too. Kindness is, is good, I guess. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> It was pointed out to me just how many of the shots in this opening are movie references and I feel pretty embarrassed and disappointed in myself for getting none of them. Zero. This should have been the, the biggest giveaway as Big Lebowski. Power! I feel... It is her, it is her, yeah, I thought so. Yeah, that's all I want, I just want... <laughs> Hand pats, if you know what I mean. Oh man, this is sort of taking a little bit of a dark and terrifying turn in a very intriguing way after the whole like be my dog comment i mean he's gonna go deep man he's gonna go real deep and he's in a lot of danger he's it's like hitting me how dangerous it is for him <laughs> as someone that's this lonely i really do love this song though no i this is something i feel really deeply and it's actually terrifying to me the smartest most independent people can be brought to their knees by loneliness. I mean, everybody experiences loneliness and understands it, right? It's a human human phenomenon. But I feel like there's a range in people in regards to just how much they need, to what extent. I, like, I know a lot of people who, you know, they kind of need their their downtime, their decompression time, thrive in, in instances of being alone. For me, it's been and continues to be one of the, the challenges I've faced and continue to face as someone who kind of needs to spend a lot of time alone to do the things I need to do. Balancing that with the calls of getting what I need socially and romantically. I started doing reactions during lockdown time and kind of just repressed that like buried it and then emerged out of that into a relationship that just consumed me in a, a fiery blaze so i get the risk it's actually really exciting it's exciting and terrifying to see denji kind of on the same precipice salad order all around she knows her power too she seems like the kind of person who knows the power she'll have. Just hope she has some semblance of a heart or conscience. So even though I've seen basically nothing of this character, they've already done such a great job establishing her allure. I mean, she seems very, very sharp and has the benefit, I think, of being super focused on something. What that is yet, I don't know. And that thing, you know, she has her mental schema for the world pretty set. And I think for an observer, especially someone who's kind of lost, let's say, or not as clearly self-defined as Denji, he's going to look at that and see, perhaps mistakenly, strength, power, confidence, maturity, when in real life it often gets revealed in these cases that that kind of prioritizing one thing over everything else, including decency to others, does imbue you with a lot of really powerful tools. It contains a trap in itself, which is the danger of not growing or missing the full truth in all its nuanced and chaotic beauty. I don't know if it really is that awesome. I mean, it's awesome. But also, welcome to this crazy life. Just don't drop it on the ground like a certain redhead character. She knows what she's doing. I'm on to you. Oh no! Oh no! Oh no! Already. I was wondering the same thing. I thought I'd missed it. Makima. <laughs> He's so obvious. He's so outmatched. He's just so outplayed. Oh my god. Oh my god. Denji, run! Run! You fool. <laughs> no. Duh. Duh. I make fun of him, but would probably fall into the same hole. Oh my god. Oh my god. Denji, no. 
マキマさんが好きです。She knows. Everyone knows. ここがデビルハンター東京本部だよ。Oh yeah, we have a, a job to do. デビルハンターが1000人以上もいるけど。Oh, that's a hundred times more people than the Jujutsu Sorcerers. そういう行為もできるんじゃ。して、そういう行為して。We know. <laughs> Everyone knows. His only hope here, I think, is if there are just a lot of hot people in his life. I don't know if that's gonna cut it. Can't I shadow you? Oh, this is painful. It's so painful because it's real. <laughs> But she'll let you think you are. She'll let you think you are. She'll keep you at exactly the perfect range. This is so exciting. This is, I'm, this is so thrilling. If love is war, <laughs> Denji just experienced a crushing defeat. Oh, that was an extreme reaction. Jealousy or something else? This is a guy's problem. Oh, yeah, nothing like a after kicking your colleague's ass smoke. I got some office bullying. So kind, so nice. Alright, that's a little better. Right. And I can imagine how that's not just a concern for Denji. I mean, it doesn't seem like it's any concern for Denji. Probably just you don't want liabilities in a job that's life or death. That's your own ass. I mean, he also just lost his entire life and frame of reference. That was rude. <laughs> that was very rude. <laughs> Or was it nice? Did he just prevent him from catching fire? Hmm. He's an enigma. Another one? <laughs> This is the start of a beautiful friendship. Oh my. Oh no! <laughs> It's nuts or nothing! <laughs> I'd like to take a moment to plug my, my merch store. The newest edition coming soon. It's nuts or nothing. Available in purple. Like this guy's nuts. Man, that's a line for the ages. <sighs> Haven't heard a line that good since <laughs> lie big and leave fast. <laughs> this was Denji's first day of having a sausage, and this guy's last. <laughs> I know they're gonna get along eventually. Though. They're gonna love each other. This is such a bonding experience. Oh, there it is. There it is. A little bit of jealousy. Showing your true colors. Nuts or nothing. Living true. <laughs> He's a man of his word. Respect. <laughs> They're already hugging, see? In a weird way, they just built a lot of respect for each other. This guy is faring surprisingly well for someone who just got his nuts bashed in. <laughs> <laughs> I would still be in the alley, crying. Ooh. What kind of special treatment? Oh. Woof. After that nut thrashing I took, I would never, never dare face Denji again. Too early to say what her character is. All I know is that she's incredibly intelligent with people and men, especially men. And she's willing to manipulate, which doesn't mean her, she's rotten to the core. It could even be a defense of sorts. You know? I've encountered people like this. I think it's really hard to unlearn. You have a certain amount of bad experiences early on to the point where you lose faith in the goodness of people or being able to get what you want through natural means, through just, you know, normal relationships. You can start to become someone who does a lot of calculus, you know, relationship calculus where everything you give feels like a loss because you're risking that feeling again. You know, you're risking that feeling of being taken advantage of or used. And simultaneously, it starts to become a game. You know, where you don't want to lose because of how crushing that felt when you, you know, you gave openly and got punished for it. So you're going to make damn sure it doesn't happen again. And rather than generosity and just overall goodness, you rely on kind of these tactics. And, you know, to be 
fully open-minded, it's powerful. And I think there are a lot of people that would exploit that if they could. But again, it's kind of terrible because you can get really stuck there. You're one, never really able to experience actual goodness because you'll always explain it to yourself as some kind of manipulation from others. And the good people will eventually get wise to the game and leave, leaving you with the people that are just like you, that actually do see you as you know a tool. And like I said, it's very, very hard to break people out of that. In general, it's very hard to break people out of these kind of cyclical types of thinking where they're convinced of one thing, you know, and the only way you could possibly get someone out of that or show them the contrary is just by being really good to them and being really patient with them. But because that's their framework, they will just think that that's a ploy. You can hope, you know, you can hope with time and energy and real care for them, they can come around, but that's a real drain on you. And not many people will stay around, especially because there's no guarantee that anybody will change. It's, it's up to them. They have to have an insight and it's not something you can force on them. It's a really difficult situation to be in, speaking from experience. <laughs> Whatever gets you out of bed in the morning. <laughs> Best roommate. <laughs> Easy living situation for this mild and reserved man. Speaking of rude. Best friends. A fiend, meanwhile, in Final Fantasy X. So we're going with fiend. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Uh, he didn't. Yeah. It triggers at least pretty easy. Just pull the string like a talking doll. They're more conscious than some anime enemies. It was very chatty. I mean, that would be a whole thing. Got a whole, do a whole transformation sequence. We don't really know, right? We don't really know what's going to happen to Denji over time. It's all new. Just dropping that backstory. So I guess in this world, Devil Hunters are a lot more open. No, he's just a protagonist. And he has a heart. Time to shake up this rigid world. But he seems to have passed a certain type of test. <laughs> Whatever gets you out of bed in the morning. But I think that was a great moment just because you do things long enough, you, you can get rigid. You, you fall into kind of a system and then people come in and have a fresh perspective. So they, they suggest things that you hadn't thought about before and your first instinct is to reject because, well, they're new and you know, you know best. And in a way you're attached to doing it the way you're doing it. But on some level, you know there's some truth to it. And then it's just a matter of how much reflection you can do to determine how you react to it. That is a huge relief. <laughs> this is my dream, collecting porn mags and scoring. Also eating food. Yeah, but then she also has no experience. That's the other, other side of that. He doesn't know. He doesn't know why things are the way they are. She is, for sure. 100%. <laughs> we know. Everyone knows. Have a little faith, my boy. Well, how flexible are your standards? <laughs> Breasts. I mean, this is comical, but I'm, I'm okay with it. Oh, we got another female character. Oh, what? Like, literally? Prostrate yourselves, humans. <laughs> oh, this is power. I'm already getting some Asuka vibes. Too real. <laughs> Too real. <laughs> oh, Yamasaki Nice. Damn, Bloodhammer. This is gonna be fun, <laughs> this partnership. 
<laughs> oh, here we go. We get the, the ending. Shot of all their bedrooms. But she has no bedroom. She just has office. His bedroom is trash. This guy just gets abused and he kind of does it to himself. Just puts himself at their mercy for the sake of boobs. So I like this episode a lot. I really like the direction with the characters that are getting introduced. There are certain elements of the characters that, that are intriguing because I think they are rare or maybe not explored that much. I mean, you know, I think that maybe it might seem kind of ridiculous, the premise that Denji is all about sex, but it seems to me, based on what I've seen so far, that it's more than that. It's not just fan service and you know, typical anime sexual humor, although there's definitely some of that, and actually might get to something real. I mean, I think I talked about this in My Hero Academia with Mineta, but you want motivation, there's not a whole lot deeper or more powerful than, I wouldn't call it sexual attraction, because it's more than that. It's something like sexual attraction as an existential crisis, and it's tough to tease out what's what, but in there is the need for connection, different ways of thinking about love and validation, how people derive their energy, the fact that on a very animalistic level, a lot of someone's value is determined by their mating potential. That's not the, the highest form of thinking about people, but looking at it just biologically, you know, there's a lot of truth to that, I think. So there's something about our natural wiring that feeds into that. And so that ends up being about identity, at least for some people, for a certain extent of their personal journey. You know, I've seen a lot of people get stuck there. You know, people talk about the hierarchy of needs and on the hierarchy of needs is romantic relationships. I know a lot of people and, you know, I might even put myself on this list, at least at certain times in my life, that get sort of stuck there and never really move on, often without them even being able to realize it. It's really tricky and hard to talk about, maybe even controversial to talk about. But I hear about these movements with men who are really bitter about women and speaking of being manipulative or seeking you know tools and tactics to get the upper hand or whatever and i'm always going to be against blaming another group of people for your plight i'm a strong advocate for personal responsibility and accepting truth and always to a healthy degree at least in a way that's not blame or cursing yourself to the core as some kind of intrinsic dark shadow that follows you around taking responsibility for yourself and trying to turn the lens on what you can do to improve or reframe or be healthier, aim for goals and getting what you need in a way that is simultaneously actionable, achievable, and also virtuous. So this is not me at all condoning that thinking, but I think sometimes what gets lost in that is that the pain is real. It's a mistake to not separate. It's easy to look at a type of thinking that we find repulsive and then react sort of with categorical hate of the whole thing, which misses something that actually might go a long way in addressing that issue, which is acknowledging pain. I know this is a human phenomenon, but, you know, I really only have my experience as a guy, so that's sort of where I'm, I'm speaking from. Girls and dating can crush you. Feeling invalid or undesirable can crush you. If you don't have a really good handle on yourself, it can go all the way to the core and that can be your, your primary source of energy for the world, you know, just feeling totally worthless. So while I don't condone bitterness, I definitely can understand it. For Denji, as I kind of theorized in the first episode, I think it's not purely sexual, although that's in there too. A lot of it is isolation and loneliness and not having any affection. That mixed with teenage hormones equals a fixation on sex that's more than just sex. Even though it might sound weird, I can understand how that could be his world. So for me, it's more than just anime fan service stuff in this case. I think it's a motivation that is not like the ideal highest motivation, right? But it's one of the most lifelike and common motivations, I think. And, you know, I don't even think it's the worst. I just think it depends, like all things, on how that energy is channeled. So if that leads to questions such as, okay, I want to have a partner that is really great and is my ideal. What am I bringing to the table? And how can I be someone that is worthy of that ideal? And then, you know, getting to work, making that ideal possible, then that's great. You know, whatever it takes, like I said, whatever gets you out of bed in the morning. And I meant it as long as it's backed up by, you know, just principles, not being a terrible person, not focusing on outcome, but on process, just about any goal, I think, if conceptualized in a certain way, kind of brings you to the same place, which is working on yourself and becoming who you want to be so that, you know, one, you've met yourself and met your potential. And two, you have the confidence that you you are worthy of good things, which I think actually goes a long way in getting good things. So maybe I'm crazy, but I actually love it. I, I love <laughs> the fact that this is the main character's motivation. I get the sense that might be controversial, but there's so much they can do with that if they handle it intelligently. And I think they are based on what I saw from, I keep forgetting her name, Mikami. She's exactly the type that will exploit that. And that seems like an, a self-aware writing choice. Though, of course, as I said, the other side of that is that she has her own pitfalls that she's falling into. So it's very exciting to see where this whole love thing goes, especially with this addition of this larger than life character power.